I am the salvation of the people, says the Lord. Should they cry to me in any distress, I will hear them. I will be their Lord forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on Sunday, the 25th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbour, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The godless say to themselves, Let us lie in wait for the virtuous man, since he annoys us and opposes our way of life, reproaches us for our breaches of the law, and accuses us of playing false to our upbringing. Let us see if what he says is true. Let us observe, observe what kind of end he himself will have. If the virtuous man is God's son, God will take his part and rescue him from the clutches of his enemies. Let us test him with cruelty and with torture and thus explore this gentleness of his and put his endurance to the proof. Let us condemn him to a shameful death since he will be looked after. We have his word for it. The word of the Lord. O God, save me by your name, by your power, uphold my cause. O God, hear my prayer, listen to the words of my mouth. For proud men have risen against me, ruthless men seek my life, they have no regard for God. But I have God for my help, the Lord upholds my life. I will sacrifice to you with willing heart and praise your name for it is good. A reading from the letter of St. James. Whenever you find jealousy and ambition, you find disharmony and wicked things of every kind being done. Whereas the wisdom that comes down from above is essentially something pure, it also makes for peace and is kindly and considerate. It is full of compassion and shows itself by doing good. Nor is there any trace of partiality or hypocrisy in it. 
Peacemakers, when they work for peace, sow the seeds which will bear fruit in holiness. Where do these wars and battles between yourselves first start? Isn't it precisely in the desires fighting inside your own selves? You want something and you haven't got it, so you are prepared to kill. You have an ambition that you cannot satisfy, so you fight to get your way by force. Why you don't have what you want is because you don't pray for it. And when you do pray and don't get it, it is because you have not prayed properly. You have prayed for something to indulge your own desires. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After leaving the mountain, Jesus and his disciples made their way through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know because he was instructing his disciples. He was telling them, the Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men. They will put him to death, and three days after he has been put to death, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he said and were afraid to ask him. They came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the road? They said nothing, because they had been arguing which of them was the greatest. So he sat down, called the twelve to him, and said, If anyone wants to be a first, he must make himself last of all and servant of all. He then took a little child, set him in front of them, put his arms round him, and said to them, Anyone who welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. The other day I came across these amusing little short prayers put together by little children. Dear God, maybe Cain and Abel would not hate each other so much if they had their own rooms. It works with my brother. Sincerely, Larry. Dear God, we learned at school that Edison made light. But in our RE lesson, they said that you did it. So I bet he stole your, I bet he stole your idea. Sincerely, Donna. Dear God, thank you for the baby brother. But I, what I prayed for was a puppy. Joyce. St. Teresa was once asked to put into a sentence what she thought holiness was. And she said, Holiness was a disposition of the heart which makes us humble and childlike in the hands of God, conscious of our own weakness, but confident to the point of boldness in the goodness of our Heavenly Father. She must have been inspired by these words we heard in the Gospel today. She saw as the surest way to heaven what she called spiritual childhood. Now, just as small children rely exclusively on their parents and or guardians, so we should have that same unbounded trust in God. When putting everything into his safe hands, especially things which worry us a lot, there should be no hesitation at all on our part that he will look after us. Little children don't worry about where the next meal is coming from or whether they will have a bed for the night. Neither do they dwell on the past or fret about the future, but they live in the present. 
If we do the same vis-a-vis -vis our Heavenly Father, a lot of our worries would dissolve into thin air. Nothing would get to us. Jesus tells us, do not worry about what you eat, or what you drink, or wear, or how you look, or even what you think of you. It is the pagans of this world who have set their hearts on these things the unbelievers, and they are mentioned in the second reading today, it talks about the godless. The problem with them, the godless that is, is that they have no heavenly father to trust in. Sigmund Freud believed that God is a figment of our imagination. God is just our conceptual longing for a heavenly father who doesn't exist, he says. He is an imaginary being we wish were there to protect us the way our earthly father did when we were children. For him, God is like a father for childish adults, so to speak. Unbelievers often disparage people who believe by trying to undermine their faith and trust in our heavenly father. They tell them to grow up or live in the real world. This point is also brought out in the first reading as follows. Let us lie in wait for the religious man or woman since they annoy us by their way of life. To shake our belief, some people dismissively say that religion is the underlying cause of all conflict in the world. St. James tells us today that that is not true. He says, the wisdom that comes down from above, that is, from our Heavenly Father, makes for peace. It's kindly and it's considerate. It's full of compassion and shows itself by doing good. If we adopt a childlike stance before God, the wisdom which we receive from above will indeed take precedence over our own limited perception of things and set us on the road to authentic holiness. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Through Christ we are children of God. Let us pray to him with confidence and faith. We pray for Christian missionaries who are working in areas of the world where there is tension with other faiths. 
May they be given strength to persevere in their mission. Lord, in your mercy. That we have the wisdom to choose ways of living which are good for the climate, the needs of future generations, and the health of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that the efforts of diplomats to bring about peace in troubled areas of the world may bear fruit. May there be an end to war and conflict among peoples. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are seriously ill in hospital or at home. May our prayers for them this Sunday bring them healing and strength. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our deceased loved ones, especially those who died recently. Mary Murphy, Morgan Sweeney, David Luscombe, and those whose anniversaries we recall today and in the week ahead. Receive the departed into your eternal kingdom, Lord, in your mercy. Let us pause and pray for needs of our own. Lord, in your mercy. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Loving Father, in your goodness, hear our prayers and strengthen us so that we may serve you with humble and grateful hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you all. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ.